So the more that you are able to heal your relationship with your vagina, the more you are going to feel free in your body because you are in more of your full self-expression. Hello and welcome to the Feminine as Fuck podcast. I'm your host, Monica Yates, a period and ICF certified women's life coach, and I help women to harness the power of their period and connect to their feminine flow. In these episodes, we will be talking about all things periods, hormones, confidence, health, food, money, sex, business, feminine flow, your brain, energy, and all the stuff that goes through our heads. You will walk away from each episode with new chicken nuggets and truth bombs, as I don't have a filter and I love talking about all the shit that people are thinking but too afraid to say. Oh God, you guys, Taylor Swift's new album is fucking sexual. It is so, it makes me like literally turned on. I am just in love with it. If you haven't listened to it, you need to go do that. Um, she obviously hasn't paid this for me. She obviously hasn't paid me to say this. She wouldn't even know who I am. Um, one day she will though. Hey, manifestation. Um, I just like full on had like the best sexy dance ever. Which is totally in line with the topic, the topic we're going to talk about today because we are going to talk about the connection between your vagina and confidence. Your vagina and confidence. And, and actually, when I say vagina, I the technical part of your vagina is only actually one part, right? The inside, like, I'm going to say, like, canal up to your cervix. But um, I'm talking about your yoni, the connection between your yoni. So that's everything. Um, your womb, your ovaries, your cervix, your vagina, your vulva – um, all of it, the connection between your yoni and confidence, because I've added a new module into Queen Alchemy. Week seven is going to be all about this in obviously a lot greater detail. And we're going to also tie in how money relates to this because money and sex are actually very closely related and they're linked. And we talk about the reason why they're linked is because they, we hold them in the same areas in our body. One, two, they often have the same blocks around them. And, um, three, they're both taboo topics. Okay. So generally there's the same sort of, generally the same sort of like shame and whatnot around it that I pick up on. So today we're going to kind of like go into a little bit detail around that. And I'm excited to talk to you guys about it, but also if you haven't done what my clients do, which is naked, sexy dancing, you need to get on that shit because it is fucking amazing and put on your Instagram story and tag me. And I'm covered in delicious body oil and I just feel fucking delicious right now. Like fucking delicious. Um, and I'm so excited for New York because the dancing, I have like specific dancing exercises, which I'm obviously not going to tell you guys about now, but I thought about it when I was like in the car one day driving somewhere and I was just like, holy shit, that is such a good fucking exercise to do. So you bet your bottom dollar, you guys are going to walk out there with every fucking version of you nailed because as a woman we have a lot of different versions of ourselves we've got the slut we've got the lover we've got the queen we've got the we've got the witch we've got the mother we've got you know the prostitute we've got all like the warrior we have all these different sides to ourselves and they're all beautiful they're all so fucking beautiful we've got the boss we've got everything right we have the sassy chick and i'm really going to help you guys be tapping into these areas because when you can actually learn how to harness every different side of yourself, you can stop judging it and shaming it and thinking you need to be streamlined. And you start to, you start to actually see the beauty in it. And you start when you're doing the work around these different parts of your personality, often what will happen is like some shame or some triggers or some blocks around it. But unless you've go, gone into these different parts of yourself, you wouldn't necessarily have realized that they're there. So it's actually really um, expansive and delicious and... Um, I can see the moon outside my window and it's fucking insane. It's actually really beautiful to be going into these parts of yourselves because you'll figure out things that you would not have figured out if you didn't go into these different parts of yourselves. Okay. Anyway, so right now I'm actually naked doing this podcast. So I feel like it's even more fitting. I was going to um, do an Instagram live at the same time doing this podcast. And then I kind of realized I can't show up to the podcast naked and I didn't want to put any clothes on because I like feeling free. And that's another thing. It is so freeing to like walk around fucking naked and not judge yourself or not look at yourself in the mirror and go, oh, I'm fat or oh, I look a bit funny or oh, what's this dimple? You're just like, fuck, I'm so fucking sexy. And I can like literally attest to like the amount of girls that have gone through the work and actually then now look at themselves and go, I am so fucking hot. And it's like, it's true. Like you are so fucking hot. But a lot of us can't believe it. And when I say we can't believe it, we can't believe it because we've got these blocks in place that are stopping us from believing it because of X, Y, and Z reasons, okay? Totally depending on things that happened when you grew up and also the way that you've um, 
what's the word, the way that you have taken on societal conditioning. Okay, so the first kind of thing that's really important to note between the connection um, with your vagina and confidence is the importance of safety. So a lot of women, I realize this in my client sessions, is they actually realize they don't feel safe. And you might go, no, it's not me. I feel safe. But when I take my clients through a process and I'm talking, these are clients, ladies that have the most amazing relationships that this is nothing to do with the guy, nothing to do with the guy and everything to do with you. They have the most amazing relationships. They have the most loving partner that just treats them like a fucking queen and will go through a process and the, and the, and the, the, the block of I don't feel safe actually comes up. And that's something to be shameful about. The reason why sometimes we don't feel safe is literally because of random things that we're holding on to in our body, which doesn't allow us to fully surrender. And when you're having sex, when you're being intimate, when when you really want to get into your feminine, if you want to be fully embodied in your feminine, you need to be able to fully let go and fully surrender and fully trust and fully receive. And a lot of us unfortunately can't yet do that yet being the keyword can't yet do that because of different reasons that we are holding on to in our body and in our mind. Okay. So if you don't feel safe, you are not going to be able to surrender in sex. And if you are working on this safety, because either you've done some work with me before, or you are aware aware of it, a nice mantra to say that I put on my Instagram story the other day, is just telling yourself I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. Because every time you don't feel safe, your body's going to clench. And this is in every scenario. This is walking home from a club, you know, at nighttime. This is getting in an Uber where you're feeling scared. Like one, you should not feel scared doing those things. The reason why I say you should not feel scared is that the only reason why you feel scared is because you've got a belief that like people are out to get you or there are bad people or whatever. You can also choose to not be available to that stuff. You can also like, if you go back and listen to my podcast about traveling, one of the questions that I was like constantly asked when I was traveling alone in Europe was like, you know, how do you stay safe? And it's like, 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 are you scared walking around at night? And I'm like, I'm not available for unsafe situations. I'm not, I literally don't put the energy out there. And this can be really triggering for people to understand, but like you attract everything that you get because it's literally your energy. If you walk down the street being like, oh my God, what if I get stabbed? What if I get stabbed? You are literally going to attract that into your reality because you're putting out the energy of stab, 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 stab. Even though you don't want to get stabbed, that's not what's coming out. The the universe doesn't hear your words. The universe responds to your vibration and your vibration of what if I get stabbed is the vibration of getting stabbed. So naturally that's going to happen. Like, well, not necessarily, but you know what I mean? And, um, don't take this fucking, don't take this fucking personally. Okay. Um, and, the, and then like, for example, when I'm walking down the street at nighttime or whatever, I like literally don't even have the availability in my mind of like, what if I'm not safe? Like, of course I'm fucking safe. Of course I'm fucking safe. But this has come from a lot of inner work ladies because I used to think that we lived in a dangerous world. I used to think men were dangerous. Now I don't see men as dangerous. My first instinct is not that men are dangerous. My first instinct now is that men want to provide for me and protect me, Right very, very different to how a lot of you are probably thinking, unless you've done one of my programs, which by the way, did I mention it before? I don't know. Um, if you want to join Queen Alchemy, we're starting in October. You need to hurry up and book in your discovery call. Um, and actually whilst I'm on that, I'm also accepting the last round of one-on-one clients. So if you're wanting to do one-on-one work, you need, um, like as be a one-on-one client for a three month container, we meet every week for three months. Then you need to also get in on that because maybe the space has been taken by the time it's podcast out. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so as a woman, we have like different, two different systems, right? We have the ANS and the SNS. So one is basically like that fight or flight. And one is like rest and digest. If a woman is in a fight or flight response all the time, which a lot of us are, unfortunately, and you don't know how to get yourself into an SNS, you are not going to be able to either to, to either, um, have beautiful, enjoyable sex or be confident. Cause if you're stressed, why would you put yourself out there? Like literally, if you are stressed, why would you put yourself out there? It's also like I said today on my Instagram story about sisterhood wounding. The thing with sisterhood wounding and like just one part of it that's important for you to note is if you have sisterhood wounding that you have not healed, it will block you from being confident because you can't be confident if you're afraid of getting stabbed in the back. You can't be confident if you're afraid of getting hurt. So if you are like meta dangerous or if you are afraid of being confident because you don't want to be hurt and you're in that fight or flight, like, so if you're in this constant fight or flight state, ladies, there's no, in, there's no way in fucking hell you're going to be confident because you don't want to attract attention to yourself. Like that does not make sense. Okay. So it's really important that you do do the things, do do, that you do do the things to get yourself into the SNS state. All right. That rest and digest and relaxation. Okay. So some things that 
are really important with your connection between your vagina and confidence is that when you feel turned on, aka sexy dancing in the shower to Taylor Swift, you feel radiant and you feel confident. So when you are either not allowing yourself to receive amazing sex, when you're not allowing yourself to receive pleasure, and pleasure can be from food, pleasure can be from exercise, pleasure can be from smelling flowers, pleasure can be from anything or or eating a juicy peach, right? When you're not allowing yourself to feel pleasure, you are not allowing yourself to be connected to your yoni. When you are not allowing yourself to connect to your feminine, when you are not allowing yourself to have a relationship with your body and with your vagina, you will not be feeling radiant and confident, okay? And what's really important also to understand is that the connection between men and our cycle is actually really important. So like if you allow yourself to fully receive from a man, you will feel like a fucking goddess. And this is receive without like, what's he thinking of me? Oh my God, am I now a weak woman? No, no, no. Just fucking receiving, right? Very big fucking difference. Okay. A lot of us are afraid of receiving because we're afraid of seeing um, being seen as weak. We don't want to receive because actually, you know what? I fucking came up with a client the other day, one of my one of clients of like, the inconvenience wound. Fuck that shit. Fuck the inconvenience wound. So many of us women walk around with this like concern of like, oh, I'm inconvenienced. Like, are you sure it's okay to do it for me? Are you sure? Like, are you sure? Yes, he's fucking sure. If a man offers to do something for you, accept it. Okay. Men aren't like women. So women will like offer to do something for somebody. And this isn't a wounded scenario they offer to do something to somebody but they don't actually want to do it and then when they and then when the person says oh i'd love for you to do that i'd love for you to do that they're like oh fuck men don't do that men won't offer something if they don't actually want to give it okay so like just cut that crap so if a man offers to like i don't know cook you dinner one night and you're like oh are you sure are you sure no no no, no. don't worry you're busy like it's okay like i'll i'll do my own dinner like that is really emasculating him actually fucking receive it fucking receive the gift of him giving you dinner. When you allow yourself to receive those things without these self-judgments, without these thoughts that then run through your head of like, oh fuck, what's he thinking of me? Was I weak? Should I have done that? Oh damn it. Maybe he offered that to me, but he actually didn't want to give it to me and I received it. Oh shit. That is blocking you from confidence and radiance because you are remaining in your head. And in your head, you overanalyze, you critique, and most of all, you're in your masculine. Okay. So I'm just going to like drop that one for you. Like that's just really important for you to note. And if you are doing that, I encourage you to fucking heal that shit up because it's not cool for anybody. Not cool for you. It's a waste of your fucking time and energy. And it's really not cool for him. And it's really emasculating him because he just wants you to fucking receive it so he can feel like a man. And a lot of this like stuff that shuts down, shuts us down from our sexuality. Hold on. I need a sip of my tea. Okay, a lot of the things that do shut us down from our sexuality and from our connection to our vagina and to our yoni and to our womb and to our feminine, and this is like really from a young age because from a young age we're often told like, put your pants on, like don't run around naked, you know, don't touch your vagina, like why are you looking at your brother's penis? Like th- like that shuts us down, right? That really does. And in our society, when you're watching the news and stuff, like I don't really watch the news, when you're watching the news and whatever, that really is designed to literally like scare you. It's designed to scare you so that you can then buy from it, so that you can be afraid so that like marketing can work. It's fucked up, but it's how the, it's how we work, right? It's how our current society is working. Um, and we're obviously, there's been, there is a massive shift in consciousness happening. And by you listening to this podcast, ladies, and like sharing this podcast on your Instagram story or by doing the work, like you become a shining light for others. And this is a beautiful thing of like, when you do the work, whether it's doing one of my courses, whether it's, you know, coming to the event, whatever it is, when you do the work, you become a shining light for other people to literally show them what is possible for them. So you, by doing this work and by listening to this podcast, you are having an impact on the world. You are literally helping to change the world. And like, that is fucking beautiful. Like, I couldn't, I can't change the whole world. I need all you girls to be listening to the podcast and sharing it to help me change the world. Okay. And in, in, um, our society right now, the sexual threats that are really encoded in our language as well, trigger stress reactions in our bodies as women. Okay. So for example, the word like, um, oh, the C word, C-U-N-T, I don't even want to say it. It just cuts fucking deep. It cuts deep. And there's generally speaking, not always, generally speaking, a yuck connotation to the word. So there are different words that you can use for like your vagina and some of those words, or even some of the ways that like, um, people describe 
like having sex um, and like having a root and like just, just different slang things, especially in Australia, they can, I'm not saying always, but these cultural concepts become embedded in our body and our brain eventually. Okay. So this, these, this, these takes, these beliefs, these energies behind these gross, sometimes, sometimes gross words that people are using for sex, for vaginas, for intimacy, whatever, they can shape her brain and that you, they, you hold them in your vagina. So it actually blocks your confidence. So there is a distinct connection between, you know, what you're holding onto in your vagina and your confidence. And like one example is if you're holding shame in your vagina, um, and you're holding trauma in your vagina, why would you be confident? And they even like say in regards to rape, the rape isn't about the sex. The rape is about taking away a woman's power because a woman's power is in her vagina. I'll let that drop for you. A woman's power is in her vagina. So when a man rapes a woman, it actually is taking away her power. Not It's not about the sex. It's about the power dynamic. It's about him being bigger than her, him being more powerful than her, and her literally being thrown off balance. It's actually been found that women that do hold a lot of trauma in their vagina actually have a lesser sense of balance, which is amazing. Like like bad, but it's crazy. That's how body our body works. Okay. So when you honor a woman's sexuality and her very essence, you literally are supporting the optimal function of our system. And when you support this, you also support her or our, um, like intellectual creativity. So there's also a connection between your creativity and your relationship with your vagina, because your sexual energy is also your creative energy. And it's also the energy of money. That's why we, that's why working on both sex and money is really important because you don't really want to work on one, not the other, because they, the two are correlated. Okay. So if a woman's like stress response is ignored, you obviously can have intercourse and have an orgasm, but you won't necessarily feel that like ecstasy that you won't feel transported and fulfilled with love and released because only a superficial part of you has the capacity to respond in a way that she's been made love to. So if you, and I know some of you are going to resonate with this, that you're having sex and you kind of feel numb. Yeah. You've literally got a stress response turned on and you're tapped out of your vagina. That is also like not cool for your partner when you're having sex and you are not in it. That's imagine if he was having sex with you ladies and you weren't, and he wasn't in it. Like that would be horrible for you, right? It would be emotionally horrible and it would also be physically horrible. Okay. So that energy is just like toxic. So if you're having sex and you're not like fully fucking enjoying it and you're like half tapped out, half numb, like in pain, whatever, you need to do work on yourself. Even like painful sex, that is fucking curable. All painful sex is, is stored energetic emotion. It's just literally stored trauma. Like they can't find a reason for painful sex. I mean, they say like endo is an example of, you know, if you have painful sex, you might have endo, but things like, um, things like vulvodynia and stuff, that's just trauma that's trapped in your vagina. Um, as one example. Okay. So in order for a woman or for us to enter like that state of like fucking enlightenment, when we are having steak, when we're having sex, when we have a really steak, when we're having steak, when we're having sex, you literally need to feel safe and you need to feel safe from bad stress in the sense of like knowing that you're entering a uh, container with someone else who will protect you. And if necessary, at the very least, not endanger you. So relaxation is really, really important for female arousal and for you to be actually having the best sex. If you are not relaxed, you will not be able to receive the most amount of pleasure and you will not be able to actually feel the most amount of pleasure. Ladies, the difference between having sex where you're like half in your head and having sex where the energy is so fucking potent is like uncomparable. It's uncomparable. For example, the two different types of orgasms, there's a valley orgasm, there's a peak orgasm. Now, a lot of us have a peak orgasm, um, which is where like we climax and we kind of drop off afterwards. And generally we tense our muscles in that, especially around our lower abdominal area and our womb and our vagina. We really tense that area and that actually blocks the energy in that part of your body. So your whole body isn't getting the benefit of that energy, right? It also is a high peak and a drop, and it feels like more of a release, but you actually will generally get tired. Like if you are masturbating to go to sleep, 
that's not necessarily the best thing to be doing all the time because what happens is when you're having just these quick climaxes and drops, like of course, sometimes you'll need a release, but when you're having these quick climaxes and drops, you're actually getting rid of of sexual energy. You're getting rid of creative energy. You're getting rid of that energy. And you don't want to be getting rid of that energy. You want to be like bringing up that energy. That's like a very big difference. And I talk about this more like way more in depth in Queen Alchemy, but if you have a low libido, it's generally also because you're like, like getting rid of all this energy. And we're not taught how to hold the energy when we're younger, because a lot of us will like start to feel that sexual energy. And then we want to try and get rid of it because we don't actually know how to hold it. And being able to hold it is a really beautiful thing that we go over in Queen Alchemy. So if you are like constantly getting rid of sexual energy, you're actually going to be depleting your life force, which is like your energy as in I'm energized or I'm tired. Like that energy is your life force. And also it's going to correlate to your cycle and your period. I've talked about this before, but your chi energy is your life force energy. And if you're constantly getting rid of your sexual energy and your chi energy, that ain't going to be helpful. Okay. Um, so sorry, I was just looking at a text message from my manager. Okay. So that's really important for you guys to know. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is that for women, in order for you to get this like amazing sexual response, and kind of going into like an altered state of conscious consciousness, it really depends on your ANS system, okay? Which is your um, oh, I haven't mentioned what it is. It's your automatic um, autonomic, sorry, not automatic, autonomic nervous system, okay? Also called ANS. This is the system in your body that controls all like your smooth muscle um, contractions in your body. So things like your heart beating, your lungs breathing, um, yeah, like your lymphatic system, those sort of things where you don't have to think about them. They're just doing them naturally. All right. So as I said before, your ANS system needs to be in, like, it needs to be fucking working properly and not have trauma wound into it. Okay. Because otherwise what's going to happen is your, like, for example, your vagina and, um, like there's muscles in the walls of your vagina. And if your ANS system isn't working properly and you've got trauma wound into it, what's going to happen is that your vagina muscles are going to be really, really tight. And that can also contribute to, contribute to painful sex. So doing this work on your ANS system and your SNS system is actually really, really important. And the biology and like the mechanics behind arousal is actually a lot more delicate in women than we understand. And it depends significantly on you being, you being, you doing things slowly, you being calmed down, um, you feeling sensitive, all of those sort of things. Okay. And something else I want to mention is that in terms of hormones is that men can also be really helpful for you boosting your libido and your, you know, sexual energy, which is going to help with your confidence as well. So there is a connection between many of your cycles and I'm going to do another podcast on this because it is juicy and I have my own experience with it. But the smell of a man will literally increase your libido, making you wanting sex and having more orgasms then, which is obviously going to help your hormones and then help your confidence levels. So I'm going to do another episode explaining more of that, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to leave that one for now, but actually going on the hormone train is an important thing. So Dopamine, oxytocin, and opioids, um, o- opioids and endorphins, they hit our system before, during, and after sex. And that can also be a massive confidence booster, right? It really is like this fucking confidence chemist shop happening in your brain before, during, and after sex. So sex is also like, so that's also another reason why sex and intimacy and your connection with your vagina is really important. And these hormones don't just necessarily need to be made with you having sex with a man or a woman. These can also be made by you doing things that you fucking enjoy, by you doing things that are going to boost your sexual energy. So dancing naked, rubbing your body with delicious coconut oil, sexually eating a fucking peach, like all of those things are going to make you feel delicious and juicy, which makes you feel confident. Like fucking dancing on a chair. I have this video I need to post on my Instagram story um, where I was like fucking like basically doing a lap dance, but like for the chair. Um, And like those things boost your sexual energy, right? And then you are more radiant. You are more confident. You are glowing more. And they're all beautiful things that you guys can be incorporating into like literally every day of your life if you want to. You can do a little fucking strip dance every morning for yourself when you're getting in the shower. And that is a delicious way to love yourself up and really start the day on the right foot. Now, when a woman's dopamine, dopamine system is like activated in the optimal way, 
Um, as in, in the anticipation of really good sex, sexual energy, um, you know, doing things that make her feel turned on, letting herself think about things that are turned on and letting herself go get those things that are turned on. It strengthens your sense of focus and motivation levels and actually will energize you in setting your goals and achieving them. So all those effects are involved in, um, the dopamine activation process. So it is pretty much a hundred percent accurate to say that if you are getting these hits of dopamine, um, you know, whether it's during sex or whether it's doing something else that makes you feel sexy as a woman, your brain can take those heightened capabilities of energy and focus it into other areas of your life and into other, you know, um, parts of your life, say like productivity, say your job, say your relationships, say your confidence levels, say your exercise, your health, all of those things. Okay. If you have low dopamine um, activation, you'll suffer from a lack of motivation, a lack of ambition. Your libido levels will be low. Your drive for life will be low, not low for low. But if your dopamine levels are balanced, you're going to be confident and talkative and out there and creative and sensual and delicious. And you're just going to have this thing about you, right? Because you've got these delicious hormones. So I like this. It's like a conversation. Okay. My foot's actually like fucking numb right now. I'm sitting on the floor and I just like sitting on the floor. It's like grounding and my fucking, you know, when like you get that like thing where you can't feel your foot. Um, and then it starts to like come back and it goes all fuzzy and like feels really weird. That's me right now. Oh my God. My fucking towel. Um, okay. So what I was saying is that you guys, uh, uh, that doing like the work around your hormones on like that physical level is really important, right? And doing the energetic stuff because if you are, okay, this is really key. If you are trying to do all of the hormone things, that's awesome. Much like if you're trying to do all the nutrition things for your period and your cycle, that's awesome. But you need to do that in conjunction with getting rid of the trauma, because you, if you haven't done the work, you are fucking holding trauma in your vagina. Like, don't tell me you're not like you literally are. Okay. As a woman, we have a womb. We take on people's shit. Okay. We, we are healers as women. So we take on people's shit in our womb. And if you're not clearing it all the time, it's going to be stuck there. Okay. And as a woman, you hold your emotions in your cervix and in your vagina. And if you are constantly stressed, constantly feel in danger, or you've got this trauma subconsciously, you will continue to clench your vagina and you won't even be fucking aware of it because you kind of like, uh, like ignored the connection or like even probably, um, rejected the connection between your brain and your vagina. And that's really important. Like you don't want, you don't want that ladies. You want a fucking juicy connection. Um, so doing the work around your hormones is really important and doing the energy work makes for the perfect duo because there's no point in doing one without the other. Okay. The inner work is really important because it's going to affect you either way. It's like people that try and lose weight just by eating and exercising, but they're holding on to like, you know, years and years of trauma. They're not going to lose the weight because half the, half the weight is actually just trauma. It's actually just them trying to protect themselves. Right. Like it's, it's like, even for example, um, a lot of people after they have a really traumatic experience, they'll start to like gain weight if they haven't cleared it from their system because their subconscious is trying to protect them on a physical level. This also shows up in skin issues. Okay. So for example, I'm going to give you an example of mine. Um, a lot of people have the psoriasis on the back of their arms and generally speaking, it's actually a gluten intolerance or it's a vitamin A deficiency immune system. Now it's neither of those for me. And I've got like a slight case of it. Um, it, it gets better and worse and I have, I never had it right. Like I, I, ha- I had it when I was, um, living in New York, so when I was a little bit younger. And then once I basically quit gluten, it went away and I like, never had it again. Then I had my ski accident, ladies, major fucking trauma, also major drugs. And it came back and I haven't been able to budget since and I'm working on it, but it's actually not a food thing. Cause my diet is literally perfect. I don't eat any junk food ever. I never want to, um, like the most unhealthy thing that I would probably eat is, is probably the grain free siete chips in America. And they're not even unhealthy. They've got all real food. It's like fucking cassava flour and coconut oil and nutritional yeast and salt. And it's like barely processed. That's that's probably the most unhealthy thing that I would eat. And it's not even unhealthy. And then like maybe around Christmas time, um, I'd eat like maybe too much of like my berry crumble that's paleo and sugar free, except for the blueberries and blackberries. So anyway, point being is it's not food related. It's actually like so throughout my arms, throughout my heart space. And I've been doing a lot of past life work. I've just fucking realized this. 
lol, I got to tell my magic woman. So long story short, and I'm going to do another episode on this. Let me know if you guys are interested in past life stuff. But I did, um, I've been doing a lot of past life work, especially around men. Cause I had some, I had a quite a traumatic past life. One of them being uh, two of the experiences. One of them, I lost a baby and then another past life. I was buried alive. So yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, um, I actually like for, for what I'm working on energetically for my psoriasis on my arms is actually getting rid of this like armor of protection from stress, from worry, from my body feeling so fucking tense and stressed and concerned about my safety after my ski accident. Right. I was in, I mean, I don't know whether, if you guys didn't follow me around my ski accident, you can actually go to my highlights and you'll see a lot of it. Um, it was a very traumatic experience. I was in hospital for a long time. Oh, I've got a YouTube video on it, but do you guys want me to do like a podcast interview? Maybe I'll do a podcast interview on it. Plus questions. You guys can ask me questions about the experience. That'd be good. Cause I actually am going skiing at the end of the year and I'll be in one of the places I'm going to be skiing is where I also was healing after my ski accident. It wasn't where I had my ski accident, but I was healing there because we moved around a little bit. Um, and it's going to be an incredibly emotional time. And I'm just getting emotional think about it, thinking about it. And um, I really can't wait to share it with you guys. So I'm definitely going to put that up on my Instagram story so you guys can ask me questions. Um, anyway, back to what I was saying. So your skin can also be a sign that you've got a protective barrier around you, which on an energetic level is showing that you're not letting yourself surrender because you don't feel safe. So weight that like a lot of weight that won't budge, for example, or, um, and a weight that won't budge can also be a hormonal imbalance. I want to say, and it can be an energetic thing. Like there's always going to be two sides and, um, same with, uh, like skin things. A lot of the time, if you are doing everything you can for your acne and it's not working and you've been doing it for a while, it's because you're like not letting go or something or you feel shame or you, you have some reason to like create a literal protective barrier for yourself. Okay. Um, where was I? Where was I before? Uh, talking about dopamine, oxytocin or something like that, wasn't I? Um, oh yeah. I was also going to say that dopamine stimulates like your motivation, like I said before, and your like ambition and whatever and your drive. And it also raises self-confidence and it's been shown to alleviate depression by stimulating action and lifting indecision. A lot of us can get really overwhelmed at times. You don't have enough delicious, sexy hormones. You ain't doing enough sexy things when you like guys. Oh, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm perfect. I get overwhelmed of course, but I, but I really like know how to tackle it now. And I got goosebumps. I just love that I get to help you guys understand this. And I love that I get my clients in a place where like the things they write, ladies, it just blows my mind. You need to check out my highlights on my Instagram story and whatnot. But, um, like this is not how it's meant to be. Like you being overwhelmed, you being stuck in your head, you being stressed all the time, isn't the way it's not meant to be. It's common, but it's not normal. You as a woman, what's normal is you feeling sexy and juicy and alive and cherished and looked after and you being able to surrender and receive and ask for what you need and looking after yourself. Like that's what it's meant to be like. Like you having baths and you like, you know, just doing those things that your body is craving and it's needing. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So with your vagina, your vagina also is really beautiful because it delivers to you the feelings that allow you to feel creative, the feelings that want you to explore and communicate and conquer and transcend. So the more that you are able to heal your relationship with your vagina, the more you are going to feel free in your body because you are in more of your full self-expression. And oxytocin also calms us down. And a lot of us are not calmed down. A lot of us are stressed as fuck. In a, um, in a study actually with rats, one rat injection with one rat was injected with oxytocin. And what will happen is where one rat being injected with the oxytocin in a whole cage of rats, that one rat will calm down a whole cage of anxious rats. So it increases sexual receptivity So it is not so surprising that when your neural pathways to your brain and your vagina are damaged, you will feel like your life has less meaning, right? Because oxytocin increases your sexual receptivity. So if you're not getting enough oxytocin, aka you're not happy, right? You will feel like your life has less meaning. And how amazing that 
if you are living this like full juicy delicious life with like all this oxytocin that you actually able you are able with by your energy to like calm others down imagine if every woman was like juiced up and like in her feminine and feeling sexual and loving every part of being a woman the world would be an insanely oh my god like it would be like an insanely sexy place to be in I think I'd be like permanently turned on walking down the street just saying um so this might have been like a bit of a triggering episode for you but the I like talking about to do boost stuff I know you guys like that another reason that this information hasn't been talked about in mainstream media is kind of because it can sound politically incorrect it is not easy ladies to talk about how the feminist movement has somewhat fucked us in our relationship with the feminine. We are all equals. We get equal rights. We get equal pay. Yes, yes, yes. But in terms of the way the women have gone, like, oh, I'm an independent woman. I don't need no man. And like, and they basically just gone like too extreme that, that, that I'm talking about, like how you shouldn't do that and how you should let a man do things for you and how you should surrender and how you shouldn't do everything for yourself. And like how you actually need a man and all those sort of things. And you, you should want a man. It's politically incorrect. Like it fucking is. And so it's not actually, it's not as for a lot of you, it's not actually easy to admit to yourself that you want X, Y, and Z without sounding like lame or pathetic or needy or politically incorrect. And that's not the truth. The truth is that life is more fun with men. The truth is that when you are in your feminine, it's more fun. The truth is that we get to ask and we get to receive. That's the fucking truth, right? This whole like, I'm an independent woman, I need no man, that is bullshit. That's actually not true at all. Your life will be fucking horrible if you never let yourself, um, if you never welcome a man into your life and let a man come into you and open your heart, your life will be fucking miserable. And I know that you're afraid of getting hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking know that shit. But life is about living, is about having emotions. And what, like, obviously there's a chance you can get hurt, but don't you want to also have those years or months or weeks of fucking enjoyment? Like that to me is worth the sometimes getting hurt, but also part of having a human experience is feeling emotions, right? It's feeling emotions. It's feeling the love and it's feeling the pain. You can't have love without also having pain because we live in a world of polarity. It doesn't mean that relationships should be painful, right? It means we live in a world of polarity. It's like you can't have light without darkness. You have to have both, okay? You have to have both. Um, now, what I also want to what I want to talk about is I feel like another reason why women's libido is so low these days and women are so like sexually uninterested a lot of the time is that is because it's politically incorrect shit, right? According to the um, American Psychiatric Association, 27 to 34% of women ladies um, more than the, which is more than double the 13 to 17% of men reported experiencing low sexual desire and a, a, like a crazy amount, 15 to 28% of women from one woman in six to one woman in three reports that she suffers from quote unquote orgasmic disorders. And this has risen in the four decades since the height of the sexual revolution. Bow, bow, problem o problem o i'm just gonna like leave that for for you guys for you guys to like discover and like dive into yourself because i feel like all the answers are coming out for you if you have a low libido do something do something about it because it's not normal and this is about you feel having trauma stored in your body whether it's from family whether it's from friends or whether it's from society we live in a society We are traumatized by society. Trauma does not mean rape, ladies. All trauma is, is stuck energy in your body, okay? And there is a link between women that are sexually empowered and their levels of happiness and confidence and those that are sexually traumatized and they even have lower levels of happiness and confidence. So for example, just in the shower before, I'm like fucking singing and like sexual dancing and it's just like, fuck, I feel so good. I feel so good. Okay. That's one example. My clients can attest to it. There is nothing like getting into your sexual energy and awakening that part of yourself. Literally none. Okay. And when you have trauma as well, it can affect your pelvic nerve 
And like you can have nerve damage from like energy, okay? A fully functioning pelvic nerve is crucial for producing dopamine, oxytocin, and other chemicals that raise your confidence and fire and feistiness and perception and motivation. So keeping shit in your body because you're either afraid of spending money or you're afraid of dealing with it or you think, no, I'm fine. Or like, I can still have an orgasm, aka a a peak orgasm. Oh, I didn't finish that train. I didn't do that. That does not mean that you are okay. You can still be missing out. So ladies, hold on, I need to sip of my tea. It's like fucking cold now because I've been talking for so long. So back to my, the, the orgasm. So there's a peak orgasm, right? Which like, I got a hair in my mouth. Hold on. Um, ew, what the fuck is hair? I got so much hair. So I will never, ever grow bald. Never. I have so much of it. Um, people ask if my hair is real. My hair is real. Everything I have is real. There is nothing fake on me. I do not have fake boobs. I do not have a fake bum. I do not have any of that. I just... My mom gave me a really good bum and my boobs are perky. I don't fucking know. Anyway, I talked about this on my Instagram story, my Instagram live the other night. Someone was asking, um, everything is real. I don't even get like my nails done. Everything's real. Anyway, I was the point. So, um, a climactic orgasm. So that like depletes your lifeless energy, right? Then the other orgasm that you can have is a valley orgasm and a valley orgasm is like, imagine just like these waves of energy, but like, I wish I could like show you it, but it's like. You know, like in the school, you'd like, because you had to never ruler, you would like underline lines, more like of like a little squiggle, a little wavy thing. That's kind of what like a valley orgasm is. More like a wave, like a big wave. Okay, you get it? Big wave. Okay. So it's more like a wave, right? And the valley orgasm is really about you having orgasmic bliss energy and like such high energy that you're like fucking another planet. Time has stopped. You are so in your body. Your senses are like, like you're like, Like your leg is spasming because there's so much energy running through you. That's a valley orgasm. That shit can last for hours because it's not about one click climax. It's about this continuing thing. And then you've also, so that's like another thing of you being like fully in this like orgasmic valley of just like fucking like, like you're swimming in a soup basically of orgasmic energy. And then another part is like you actually being able to extend your orgasm from not being just in your vagina, but to your whole entire body, which I'm going to show you guys how to do, not like literally demonstrate, but like explain to you guys how to do it in Queen Alchemy. Because if you're holding the energy only in your vagina, like you're blocking that energy from right there and you're not, and you're not extending it, right? So when you allow yourself to have a valley orgasm where it's through your whole entire body, it's an orgasm that fills you all the way up it doesn't deplete you. So a peak orgasm like depletes you and like you drop off, but a valley orgasm, it's like it rejuvenates you. Like you can't have a valley orgasm and then go to sleep. Like you will be too energized because the life force is radiating through your whole entire body. Okay. And men can have this too. Men that, oh, now I'm foot again. If you are a man listening to this, by the way, if you're a man listening to this or you have a partner, ladies that wants to do the work in case you didn't see it on my Instagram stories, I'm now taking, um, client uh, men as clients for one-on-one work if they want if you want to do anything with it but for um men when you ejaculate that is a like let's just compare the two that's basically a peak orgasm so you're like depleting your life force energy but a valley orgasm is you having an orgasm without ejaculating which i know so many of you know that's not possible it is possible it is possible and we're not going to go into that today we can go into it another time but that is that is absolutely possible so if you are a man and if you want to do work on healing all the shit on the inside and really stepping into your masculinity and understanding women and, and, and all that jazz then I recommend that you reach out to me because I would love to do a session with you okay so I think that's kind of everything that I want to go through but I need to do a podcast episode oh my leg oh ah you know, when like your leg starts coming back and it fucking hurts. That's my leg right now, obviously. Um, so I hope that guy that made sense for you guys, right? Really, it's about having like the importance. I hope that you guys basically got the importance of your connection with your vagina because it is a very, very important one if you want to heighten your confidence and you want to heighten your creativity and that fire under your ass and your passion and your feistiness and all of that sort of stuff, okay? And also actually with orgasms, the quality of your orgasm, hence peak or valley, the quality of your orgasm will also influence your confidence and creativity. There's un- oh, hiccup, hiccup. 
Um, sorry, I'm just going to rewind and start again. Okay, rewind back again. So what was I saying? The quality of your orgasm will also influence the confidence and creativity that your orgasm unleashes. So if you're having a shit quality orgasm, so if you're not having any orgasms, you're not allowing yourself to release all that creativity. And this isn't about that you need to have an orgasm every single time you have sex because you can have like more of a valley orgasm or more of being that in that really heightened state of orgasmic bliss for four hours where time stops and like literally time stops and you're just like you whiz through time. And and it's key. Like if you if you're getting bored in sex, you're doing something wrong. Like really enjoyable, energetically connected sex like you can't go back to regular sex once you have that sex. Like I'm going to be honest, like you literally can't go back to it once you have that sex. That sex is like the most soul filling, body expanding, like it's the most fulfilling thing that you can give yourself. Like literally, like you don't even need, like you can have sex like that and you don't even need to have an orgasm, but you will feel so fucking fulfilled after it because you don't need to have an orgasm per se to be fulfilled it's more the energy that can fulfill you so I'm gonna leave it there actually I feel like it's a good place to stop um so hopefully you guys got some chicken nuggets out of that I am going to do a podcast 100% on the connection between men and our cycle and our periods but I really want to encourage you that if you felt like this resonated with you and you're like fuck I need to clear the trauma I need to clear the blocks I know this is something I need to actually work on because like is this something you need to work on because having amazing sex is like a birthright it's it's a beautiful part of life and if you're not giving yourself the opportunity to experience that you're wasting your time like you're missing out so if you want to clear the shit um and clear all those blocks and everything I really encourage you to book in your discovery call for queen alchemy we start the middle of october so you must book in your call before the 10th of october and if you don't then like kind of snooze you lose so make sure that you dm me if you can't get in for whatever reason um and if you're watching this if you're listening to this podcast later on then we will open it again sometime next year i guess um or you can join me for a one-on-one um for one-on-one coaching okay and for those one-on-one coaching spots it's kind of like if you're like if you feel like you're the true hard case you're my girl or you're my man um I should say woman you're my woman um because I love the two hard case that shit is my jam it is the peanut butter no the jelly to my peanut butter peanut butter to my jam peanut butter to my jelly whatever um whatever it's 10 p.m again I need to go to sleep and I'm going to read my book and I'm going to, oh my God, I'm going to plan some New York stuff, but I'm also going to plan my certification program for next year, which I'm so excited about. And I'm going to plan my witch wisdom, um, my witch womb wisdom program, www, um, which is going to be a really fun witchy program. And I mentioned this on my podcast, on my, um, Instagram story maybe a month ago now so many of you were like so fucking keen it's gonna be a fun witchy program it's not gonna be like deep subconscious work it's gonna be like fun and witchy and like woo woo so if you're interested in those programs make sure that you're on my my um, mailing list or that you like follow me on Instagram so you don't miss out on them because they'll be limited spaces okay I'm going to head off as per usual ladies if you have topics that you'd like me to talk about please can you um email them to me, manager at monarchyates.com.au. My DMs get lost. So please email them to me um, or email them to Shelby so we can like keep a track of them and I can do them for you guys. All right. I love you so much. Oh, and if you guys haven't left a review, I'd be really grateful. I'd also, this, this podcast could really help so many of your friends um, and also kind of take away from the whole politically incorrect thing and taboo stuff. So if you feel comfortable, I'd be really um, grateful if you could um, screenshot it and tell me your top takeaway, um, pop it on your Instagram story so I can see that you've been listening. And so I can thank you personally for supporting me and supporting my mission and all the other women in the world, because you do support by listening to this, you support all the other women in the world that are learning. I love you. And I will talk to you soon. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you got lots of chicken nuggets out of today's episode. I would be really, really grateful if you'd be able to leave me a review and a star rating that you think is appropriate, hopefully five. And if you could share this podcast so that I can help more women live a life of flow and ease, I would be so fucking grateful. Make sure you tag me in it on Instagram so I can personally thank you because I know so many of my clients 
have found me literally because their friends have posted about my podcast on their Instagram story. And I just want to help as many women as possible. So by you sharing it, I would be so fucking grateful. And I'm sure your friends would be too. If you do want to welcome me, please do check out my website for all those details. And of course, you can DM me on Instagram with any other questions. If you have any podcast things you want me to talk about, any ideas, any feedback, I am always open to it. And I always love hearing what you guys have to say. So please don't hesitate about that either. I will catch you on the flip side. Have an amazing day or night wherever you are. 